atheists. Well, you just gotta have faith. As a Christian, that's not enough for me. All that does is validates a false idea that there's no reason or evidence for the Christian faith. You're going to hell for not believing in Jesus. It's just not helpful. I don't know who's gonna hear that and think, wow, you know what? I might as well just come to Jesus right now. I believe in Christianity is true because the Bible says so. They don't believe the Bible's true. It doesn't help. It doesn't, you got, you got to do something else. I'll, I'll pray for you. To that person, it's like the equivalent to you saying, I'll do nothing for you because they don't believe in the God that you're praying to. And sometimes people say it really condescendingly, like, oh, you're, you're kind of too far gone. So I'll just, I'll just pray for you. Well, you know, if I'm wrong, then, you know, at least I still lived a moral life. But if you're wrong, then it'll cost you your eternity. Well, Christian, if you're wrong, the Bible says you should be pitied among all people. So we should probably stop saying that too. I actually agree with you 100%. All of it? Yes, I All do. of it, all of it. I do. Um, <laughs> ha! So one of my most nah. favorite okay. people in the Bible. Mm. That's interesting. How come we don't agree? It's, okay. it's, I mean, if I say what I was going to say and then come to you. My most favorite people in the Bible is Apostle Paul. Mm-hmm. And the reason I love Paul is that he embodies spirituality and mind, Mm -hmm. intellect. The logic. Yes. Because for me, I'm I'm the same way. I'm like, I I have felt things that I cannot explain. I've experienced God in ways I can't explain. That's nice. But I can't translate that to somebody else unless there's an intellectual understanding that I can bring to you. Unless I can break it down and explain, this is how this makes sense. This is how this this is what this feeling is and and how it's it's consistent with what the bible says so i love paul because he's the only apostle okay thomas went to india but he's the one who is known as the apostle to the gentiles Mm -hmm. peter could talk to the jews because the jews had a reverence for who god is they knew about signs they knew about wonders they had history oh our forefathers crossed the red sea so they believed in god by default because Mm. they're like that's their history but paul goes to the gentiles who Worship anything and everything based on their understanding of it. And especially I love uh, Acts chapter 17 where he goes to, to Athens and he looks around and he sees all these uh, all these altars to different gods. And there's even an altar to an unknown god. That's, that to me sounds like modern day Asia where Indians have three million deities and they still add. If you go and they think you're really amazing, they can make a statue out of you and start worshiping you. How do you know it's not there? <laughs> Dugo! Should be. Dugo! <laughs> um, but Paul comes in and he doesn't come and start talking about, oh, you know, the God of the Jews who parted the Red Sea. That is foolishness to somebody who doesn't understand the context you're coming from. But he comes and he talks about, hey, I've seen that you guys are religious on many fronts. I've even seen a statue to an unknown, an unknown God. What you guys call unknown, now let me tell you what it is. Mm. And then he starts with, you know, the God who created the universe, something that everybody can understand. And then he breaks it down and he's just like, that God, he ordained the times and places you'd be born. And he talks and talks and talks until eventually now he comes to the gospel message. That makes sense. But if you come, most pastors tell you how you will burn in hell. I'm like, if I don't believe in heaven or hell, you telling me I'll burn in hell doesn't change my life. Mm-hmm. So I feel like everything he has said is spot on. When I say I'll pray for you, if you don't believe in God, that pretty much seems like, oh, sorry, this is this sounds like a you kind of problem. It sounds dismissive. Um, when he's talking about how we look down on people and we're like, hey, you know, I don't know about, about the things that you're going through. Christians don't understand that. We didn't save ourselves. Okay, for most... Most people, they grew up in church. And so we speak Christianity by default, mm. not understanding that not everybody has the same background you have. And so if you're reaching somebody who doesn't think like you, you need to bring them from where they are to where God needs them to be. Even you yourself, and I know this is a problem with many people in the church, that we don't even know why we believe what we believe. And so it makes it it makes it really hard to reach out to people who don't come from the same background because even we are struggling with our own belief and our own faith. So that's why I agree with everything you said. Okay, I have a different approach to all that. Um, I believe, I, 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 it's a current moment, subject to change. Um, I believe the best person to turn a Christian is God himself, not what pastors, um, and atheists, atheists yeah. all, all, all those people around you say. The best people to turn you into... Uh, to believe in God is God himself. So when 
you when you come all over um trying to reach them where they are at i feel i don't know you are playing with ideas that might not that, that might not uh, necessarily be within god's lane um you might you might get lost or some things might get lost in translation so i do believe that when it comes to that idea you you don't get them from where you are from where they are you build a foundation from there from them not from completely different from you I, i feel like people have the ability to have two conflicting ideologies in their head but at the same time and think about it so i don't believe you should come into this ideology and try to take them from there i feel like you should build a new one from from scratch and then build it from there and then god will intercede from there yeah. so going f- to them i understand that sometimes going to them as uh, from their level is 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 kind of say humane but when you i feel like when, when you're stepping into like the spiritual spiritual realm and all that um you 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 want to lead you want to entice from a spiritual place mm. so instead of of i understand logic has a place but logic built on the foundation of a different of a different and an opposing ideology that they might not believe in mm-hmm. and then they 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 think on both ideologies as they come up and then they switch instead of trying to to mix them up that's I, what i think I, i do agree with you and i think what i was saying was not coming from where you're at it's it's understanding the language that makes sense to you because if i'm speaking a different language from you i'm not even sure what i'm giving you to think mm. about so i think that's that's what i say that's what i see apostle paul doing that he he spoke in their language so now they can start saying okay he's bringing a new concept let's think about what he's actually saying mm-hmm. he's not completely agreeing with what they are doing he's just saying uh this is how you speak this is the language you speak okay now let me translate what i know and believe to mm. a language that makes sense mm. to you then now let's start building from there but at the end of it it's not our responsibility to convince anyone and i think pastors need to know this our job is not to convince people to get saved that's not our job that's the work of the holy spirit if it was about logic <laughs> yeah some of us would not be here but it's it's about us giving the giving uh it's about us saying what 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 it is that the gospel message is mm. and then god is the one who convicts and transforms also that's something that's also something that i i i sometimes find uh confusing is when people speak from their own experiences pastors speak and preach from their own experiences i feel like experiences sometimes are individual so whenever you're preaching there's like only like one to pass two people in the crowd like really understand what you're going through plus most pastors are from a different generation no. I, I, you, you can say only like one two pastors have, have really i don't want to say gone through but have really uh handled uh gone through the kind of challenges that our gen z have gone through so speaking from experiences kind of sometimes loses and um just confuses somebody and then you feel when you speak from experiences you make somebody's feel like their experiences at, at that moment do not align with what uh what the message is so uh, sticking with theology sometimes the, a, a theology based i understand some people might not be able to 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 understand the language but speaking heavily through theology and getting the word out and heavily putting um like the, referencing the bible a lot and all that instead of experiences most of the time would have somebody thinking more on it i, I understand sometimes people are thrown off but you, you can you can't have control over everything so i understand i come from the idea that theology should should um should have center stage so yeah that's true but i think they should be both nah. there's no gray area no gray